zombie? <laughs> yes, Trog. I'm not quite sure that there is some moral victory in this. Yes, of course I am. And moral victories are always painful. Because I'm thinking of taking up some lighter employment, like down the mines. <laughs> then, my love, we outmaneuvered the windbreak. I still think we should have burnt it. <laughs> what a petty thing for her to do. Oh, well, that's just the point, you see. But we have not sunk to her level. And why? Because we are on a higher spiritual plane. Yes, definitely. Oh. Do you think we've earned a nap? Yes, I do. Mr. Bailey, I want to see you in my drawing room at once. Won't be a minute. That is correct. You will be ten seconds. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Now tell me, why have you erected my windbreak in the wrong place? It isn't. That's where you wanted it. Originally, yes. But after consultation with my neighbours, I agreed to move it. Well, how was I to know that? I'm not psychic. But you are impertinent, Mr. Bailey. <laughs> I went out early this morning, so I left a note. I didn't read no note. That is transparently obvious. It does not alter the fact that I left one. Now... Did you or did you not see a pale blue envelope cellotaped to the handle of your pickaxe this morning? <laughs> yes, I did. And what was written on that envelope? N.B. Well? Well, I'm not N. Bailey. I'm Arthur Bailey. A.B. <laughs> you stupid man. <laughs> Talk to me like that. I can because I pay your wages. And get off my carpet. Did... <laughs> For your information, Mr. Bailey, N.B. means nota bene. Who? It's Latin. Ah, oh, well, I come from Balham. Very well. The fact that you come from Balham probably does excuse your ignorance of even elementary Latin. It does not excuse ignoring a written instruction which is sellotaped to the handle of your pickaxe. Written instructions of a white collar worker's eye manual. I see. So unless a sign reads, keep off the grass, Mr. Bailey, and all other manual workers, you ignore it, do you? <laughs> I didn't mean that. Well, what do you mean, Mr. Bailey? Well, I mean, it, it's up now. It, 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 it's a fait accompli. Oh, so we know French in Balham, but not now. <laughs> Figure of speech, it's up. Well, then take it down again. Why? So that my neighbours don't think I have gone back on my word of honour. Now, kindly move my windbreak. Say I said no. Then I should report you to your managing director. Ah, well, he's a personal friend of yours, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> you also <laughs> happens to be the lead tenor in my music society, Mr. Bailey. N.B., Mr. Bailey. Look, I didn't say I wouldn't move it. I said, say I wouldn't. Then move it, Mr. Bailey. And keep your verbal convolutions to yourself. Hey, Wally, stop what you're doing. Lady face ain't wants a windbreak move. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> is that where you want it? Yes, it is. You sure? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> the devil's that thing doing there? Well, I was told to move it, so I moved it. By the people next door, I presume? No, by your wife. I'll check on that. If you're lying, you're going to be in very hot water. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> Howdy up, Wally. The sooner we're out of here, the better. What a beautiful evening. Evening, Mr. Bailey. Good evening. <laughs> oh, just a minute. Y yes? Did you move that windbreak? Yes. Yeah. Who told you to? 
The woman here. That's just me. She's no right to do that. What about my rights? I do have them, you know. It's just they're not allowed to come out in this district. <laughs> Stop moaning. Wally, tools. Don't bother, because you're going to have to move it again. Come on, Bob. Run for it, Wally. It's a man. <laughs> what are you doing, darling? <laughs> I'm going to do the drinks. See you there in a moment, Jerry. All right. All right, where is she? God, you, <laughs> you don't care, do you? You don't care you at all. I don't care, Barbara, because I don't know what's going on. Oh, don't give me that. Don't tell me that you have noticed that it's been moved. Yes, I have. Well, we didn't move it, so she must have. Well, he said she had, but I haven't had a chance to ask you. Well, yet. when you ask her and she says no, she's lying, because she did or he wouldn't have. Well, I wanted it moved this morning. That was this morning. It was in the wrong place this morning. If you'd moved it this morning, it would have been in the right place, but you didn't move it, so it's in the wrong place. So answer that. How can I? It's gibberish. It's bad manners. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned bad manners. This is the second time today you've burst into my house and attacked my wife. How can we attack her? She's always in hiding. Yes, all she does is pop herself in and out now and again to move our windbreak, her windbreak, when we're not looking. And my fruit trees in my garden Oh, already... damn your garden. And damn your windbreak. Language? What is going on? Oh, oh she's Margaret, taking to your face. Being quiet, about. a pair of you. One more word out of either of you and I swear I shall throw you both out of the French windows. Now, Margot... Will you please tell us, as simply as possible, why this piffling affair of the windbreak has been blown up into such giant proportions? Very well, Jerry. But I don't see why Tom and Barbara are in such high dudgeon. Oh, don't you let me tell Shut you, Margot. Up. Yes, Margot. Well, Tom and Barbara asked me not to put the windbreak where I had originally intended. I left instructions for Mr. Bailey accordingly. Unfortunately, he did not read my note and put it up as per my original instructions. I came home, noticed, and made him move it. But in the meantime, we have moved all our fruit. I didn't know that. <laughs> we may have jumped to conclusions here. Obviously. Well, that's that sorted out. Good evening, Jerry. Good evening, Margaret. <laughs> Good evening, Barbara. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, Margot. Good evening, Margot. Good evening, Jerry. Good evening, Barbara. Good evening, Jerry. Good evening, Barbara. <laughs> you'd like us to stay to dinner. <laughs> You've certainly got a cheek. Margot? Why not? I think I can stretch my pasta. <laughs> Are you going to make a joke, Tom? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just going next door to get a few bottles of Peapot Burgundy to say sorry and to help things along. No, Tom, I wouldn't do that if I... Oh, dear. Oh, I thought you liked our homemade wine. Oh, we do. But not by the bottle. <laughs> it's um, hardly a table wine, is it? Ah, oh, well, just think of it as an under-the-table wine. <laughs> <laughs>